Hello everyone, uh, we are back with Phos4G with the afternoon in the Concagua zone. Uh, it's still a bit early, but well, uh, I will be presenting you. Uh, here is Eduardo Nehut, works at Facebook. Uh, what? Sorry, uh, technical problems. Um, do you mind if we start already, Eduardo? Uh, yeah, we can get started, so maybe a early. So um, I'm happy to get going. Okay. So, okay, he will be presenting OpenStreetMap and the Neglected Pedestrian. Uh, is that yours? Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, hi, everyone. Happy to be here talking about pedestrian infrastructure. My name is Eduardo, and I'm here talking on behalf of Facebook, but I'm going to be talking about a lot of things today related to open source geospatial and really just pedestrian infrastructure, which is a lot of interest to me personally. I gave this talk recently at say the map, but I've tried to change it a little bit. I usually don't give the same talk twice, but I thought that this one was definitely relevant to both the open stream map audience and the more general FOSS audience. So. I'm really keen to get into it and hear your thoughts about the state of pedestrian infrastructure around the world. I want to talk about the role of pedestrian infrastructure in digital mapping and indeed just the role of pedestrians in digital mapping. I want to talk about why I approach this topic and talk about the data that I downloaded to look at and compare against the, the cities that we're going to be looking at today. Um, we're then going to review the data then going to be looking at some of the challenges around pedestrian data and then how you can all contribute to pedestrian infrastructure and, and mapping of it. So before I get into it, pedestrian infrastructure is incredibly important, of course, um, but it varies greatly across the world. And I'm recently living in the United States. I became really fascinated with how it how pedestrian infrastructure here is so different from other parts of the world that I've lived in and traveled to. We'll get into that in a moment, but I just wanted to step back and look at the history of, of mapping just in more recent times. If we think even back in the last 20 to 30 years, a lot of us would have been using paper maps, probably some sort of road atlas. Um, on the left here, you have one for actually Al Fallujah in Iraq which is probably one of the less common ones you'd, you'd see, but people around the world using paper maps, using road maps specifically to get from point A to point B. And, you know, you would see pedestrian focused maps if you're talking about hiking trails and if you're talking about maybe a walking tour of Rome, you could buy books like that, but it was less common to see people using pedestrian maps. I wanted to explore a bit about that and then the relationship with how that ties into pedestrian infrastructure and whether or not pedestrians are a bit neglected. We then moved on to the digital age and, and this was the time of, remember those maps that you print out? I was incredibly excited by this when you could first print out Google Maps turn by turn directions and then you'd sit in the passenger seat reading those directions turn by turn to the driver or vice versa, vice versa, having them read to you. And this was this was a huge development compared to the mailways, just being able to pr print out a specific group for you, not having to look at grid references. It was pretty amazing, but still very car-centric. And you can see here the evolution of Google Street Map, um, sorry, Google Maps over time, very much a, a road atlas, the same vein as what you might have had on a paper map, but moved to the digital age. And then along came OpenStreetMap. This was this crazy project, began in 2004. And the idea here was to really just allow people to map whatever they find interesting. And the name OpenStreetMap, of course, had street in the name. So there was still perhaps some sort of bias towards roads and, and cars. But it didn't have to be because people could add whatever they wanted. And here you can see in 2006, this was still very early days for OpenStreetMap. These were the days where you could have a party, a mapping party, and you could go and add basically the entire road network or the entire route network of an island to the map. 
And that's what they did here on the Isle of Wight in 2006. They used GPS trackers, they went by, by car and foot and bicycle, and they mapped the entire island. And I think this was an early indication that OpenStreetMap could be used to map not just road infrastructure, but pedestrian infrastructure, hiking trails, parks. And you could do so in a very short period of time with a group of people who care about that location. So what am I talking about today? Well, I want to look at five different cities across the world, Folsom in the United States, Heidelberg in Germany, Melbourne in Australia, Stonetown, which is part of Zanzibar City in Tanzania, and Yersan in South Korea. And I want to look at these cities because they've got different characteristics, different approaches to urban planning, varying topologies. They differ culturally a lot as well. And I'm a bit familiar with each of them, so I, I find it easier for me to compare against um, between them and look at the state of pedestrian infrastructure. And the questions I'm going to be asking are, what type of pedestrian data has been added to OpenStreetMap already in these locations? And how closely does it match the reality on the ground? To begin, I used Overpass, which is a tool for OpenStreetMap, and a query to download all pedestrian data, data that I thought was relevant to pedestrian infrastructure. I'm going to share this on Twitter later. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts about whether I've missed anything. I tried to include different nodes and ways and areas that relate to pedestrian infrastructure. I might not have got everything, but I hope it's a snapshot if you're analyzing data in OpenStreetMap that gives an indication of what infrastructure exists there now, at least as it's mapped in OpenStreetMap, that we can use to make a judgment about the, the quality of an infrastructure in that area. Once I downloaded this data, I imported it into QGIS, and QGIS was a great tool for inspecting the OSM data. You can see here the results of a Melbourne query, and this is just the CBD area plus a bit of buffer around it to compare against the suburbs, but mostly, uh, mostly just the downtown area. I didn't look at the length of line strings because a lot of the line strings were cut up and it didn't seem like, like a complete enough data set for the length to be an interesting metric. But you'll see some of the stuff that I did look at in the, on the next slide. So we started to look at things like just the types of tags that are applied and, and what actually made this particular way or node a pedestrian infrastructure. And so you see here, you can um, there's put equals yes, which is which is what flagged this one as being related to pedestrian infrastructure. On the right hand side, probably a bit too small to see on your screens, but this one was highway equals crossing. And I went to I started to go through all of the different types of data in each city and, and see what is it that that particular city has mapped related to pedestrian infrastructure, and how is that different to the reality on the ground, or maybe not different at all. The starting point, really what got me interested in this, was Folsom in the United States, which is where I'm living now. And Folsom is really weird. You have these sidewalks, which are incredibly well mapped um, in some parts and, and just incredible infrastructure in some parts. And then they just disappear. You'll have sidewalks like this, which are just fantastic in the suburban areas. And then you'll try to walk to, say, a commercial downtown area, and the sidewalks will just disappear where you'll have to cross a six lane highway, just some really unpleasant scenarios as a pedestrian. And so I was curious about, you know, how this differs between countries. And of course, OpenStreetMap is a great way to compare. So looking at Folsom in particular, you can see things like highway equals footway, highway equals path, highway equals cycleway. If you look at the state of OpenStreetMap, there's commercial areas that are mapped fairly well. There are parks and trails that are well mapped. Residential neighborhoods are unfortunately neglected though. So a lot of these white spaces, they actually have amazing sidewalks, but they're just not well mapped at all. And so that's really the major gap in Folsom is that you have some sidewalks and residential areas that are phenomenal, really wide and, and recently constructed in many cases because Folsom is a young suburb but then they just disappear and they're disconnected. So a lot of work to be done in OpenStreetMap to both match the reality on the ground, but also help us better understand the connectivity or the lack thereof between 
these residential areas and the downtown commercial areas. Next up, we're looking at Heidelberg. This is the host of State of the Map 2019. University of Heidelberg is located here. And it also has a really strong open street map ecosystem. It's the home of open route service, which is a really powerful open street map routing engine and one of the best in my, in my opinion. So the reality is that it's got a strong open street map ecosystem and the infrastructure itself is really good. If you walk around Heidelberg or even if you, you cycle, um, obviously not pedestrian focused, but both cycling and pedestrian wise, the city does really well. You can walk throughout the downtown area and feel pretty safe. You can feel like you can get to wherever you need to go without needing to cross the six lane highway or take another mode of transport. Is this reflected in OpenStreetMap? Well, the answer is for the large part, yes. It's extensively mapped, as you can see on the left-hand side, looking at it in QGIS. You can see in blue here, in, in the dotted blue, we have the ways, and then we have some of the highway equals crossing on the in the orange dots. And they've used a lot of different tags like lit equals yes, smoothness equals good, bad, uh, the surface. So this shows that they've added a pretty significant degree of detail. I think what's missing, however, in Heidelberg is actual individual ways. So some of the dotted blue lines you see here, they're not actually um, they're not actually individual ways. They're just the roadway, and then they've said that there's a sidewalk on the side. So if you're familiar at all with OpenStreetMap, you can actually tag it as sidewalk. Sidewalk equals both, or right, or left. But I think practice generally these days is to actually map out the way as an individual line string so that you have a line string for the road and a line string for the sidewalk. Next up, we have my home city of Melbourne, Australia. This is a very pedestrian friendly area, I would say. Most of the suburbs are pedestrian friendly. The downtown area is particularly pedestrian friendly. I love walking around there. I really take public transport or any other form of transport in the downtown because it's just so easy to walk. And I'd say that's largely true of most of what you see here. The exception is probably this area south of the Yarra River where there's major highway and uh, it's quite a built up area. And sometimes the pedestrian infrastructure here can get a bit, a bit complicated and just feel just feel a bit more difficult to navigate. Um, it's also the city of the Melbourne Demons, which I am happy to say this weekend, or so this last weekend, won the Premiership the first time in 57 years. I just had to get that in this presentation. Uh, reigning Premiers now, which I did not think I'd see in my lifetime. So super happy about that one. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm digressing, but check that out if you haven't. Um, it's called Australian football and it's only played in Australia. So that's that's Melbourne's claim to fame in the last uh, last week. What's the status of OpenStreetMap here? Well, the downtown area is extensively mapped. As you can see here, it looks like almost every way has been added, all the highway equals crossings, same with most of the suburbs. But as I mentioned, that area south of the city where pedestrian infrastructure is actually a bit more complicated has actually been missed in OpenStreetMap. And that might be because there's a lot of tall buildings, which makes it harder to work out what exactly you're mapping. Moving on, we're now looking at Stonetown Zanzibar, which was very close to Dar es Salaam, which, as you know, was the last, no, second last physical hospital we had. We had Bucharest in 2019. I think Tanzania was 2018. Incredible conference. And that was actually the last time I was in Stonetown. Beautiful city. If you haven't been, I, I really encourage you to go to Stonetown, which is in Zanzibar City on the island of Zanzibar. And I chose this place because it's got this dense urban area, which you can see in the bottom right photo. An incredibly beautiful downtown, just amazing mix of architecture and wonderful for a pedestrian because it's very hard to, to get any vehicles in there. The only vehicles that get in there are scooters. So physically like getting a car into, into these narrow city streets is a nightmare, um, it just doesn't happen. The only problem for pedestrians is that it's incredibly complex to navigate. Like 
it's very windy. It's not a grid system, as you can see here on the left-hand side. I've, I've probably never had a more difficult place to navigate. It feels like you're in a maze, which is actually a lot of fun, and you always discover new places. But the point here for this presentation, of course, is to compare the reality on the ground with OpenStreetMap. The reality on the ground is actually well reflected in OpenStreetMap, at least for this downtown area. You can see that almost all the ways have been mapped out as pedestrian friendly. And the other thing that they had, which was really interesting, is um, squares. So squares, of course, are pedestrian related infrastructure as well. These are larger gathering spaces where pedestrians or just citizens can mingle. And so they're reflected on the map here as well. The main difference, um, or, or I, I should say the main gap that needs to be filled in is some of the newer areas, which are on the eastern side of Creek Road. Some of them are mapped in the southeast here, but in the, in the east, uh, northeast, not mapped at all. Pedestrian infrastructure does get worse between these two areas, but there are sidewalks. You can see them on imagery, like in the top right-hand side. So I think future efforts would want to add that to the map. Next up, we have Yesan. This is the last city we're looking at. This is in Korea. This is my wife's hometown. Very, I would say quite a small town in South Korea and predominantly an agricultural town. Infrastructure here is, as far as sidewalks, is not great. There's some commercial areas, the main streets that have sidewalks, but really beyond that, it, it's pretty patchy. And I guess, one of the reasons why is that there's a lot of things that we would probably call living streets in open street map, which are these streets where pedestrians and, and cars share. The speed limit is generally very low, they're narrow and windy, and so you can feel pretty safe walking them, but generally not a lot of pedestrian infrastructure. This could be a problem for an aging population where all the people probably find it difficult to get around the city on, on foot. And so mapping it, we can try to make it clear to government that these, these are deficiencies that need to be addressed. In terms of the state in OpenStreetMap, this is actually one of the places I've seen that was most poorly mapped in OpenStreetMap. Even the county hall, which is the main large government building in this area, had roads right next to it that were missing. So I've started to add some of those in. I've started to add what pedestrian infrastructure I can see, but a lot needs to be mapped. And I'm hoping to do future field surveys there to, to actually take imagery uh, because the satellite imagery is pretty poor, but pretty much no pedestrian infrastructure other than a few things that I've added. And so I think a lot of work to be done to add the sidewalks that exist currently and even tag maybe some of these roadways which are pedestrian, pedestrian friendly uh, because there's no other option. To compare, okay, so this is a summary of the different locations. Folsom in the United States, I would say that in OpenStreetMap, there's a lot of work, work to be done. We mentioned mapping a lot of the connectivity between places and even the residential areas. The infrastructure, though, is amazing in some places. Near my house, it's great. And then it just disappears and is awful in others. So three stars for infrastructure. Heidelberg, Germany really well mapped in open street map, but I think some individual ways for pedestrian infrastructure could be added. Excellent infrastructure overall, though. Uh, the city's done a really good job over time of, of making that possible. Melbourne, Australia, open street map, you know, pretty well mapped, but there are some patchy areas outside of the downtown area, and I think that's the remaining focus. The infrastructure itself is really, really good. Just again, that area south of the CBD that gets complicated and Hopefully we'll see some, maybe some additional bridges or just simplification of pedestrian infrastructure there to make navigating them easier. Stonetown, OSM has been really well mapped in the downtown area, but again, there were gaps on that northeastern side in the newer area of town. And infrastructure, brilliant in the downtown area, so similar to false and brilliant in one place, but then in the newer areas, it's actually pretty abysmal. So. Mapping in an open street map, we can give a clearer picture to government once again of what needs to be done. And yes, and lastly, OSM, really a nascent community there. But the exciting thing I think in Korea is that the FOSS community seems to be really strong. I know they've had FOSS Fiji in the past. They have their own 
FOSS conference series. So I'd really love to connect with the community and see if we can create bridges between OpenStreetMap and, and, uh, and the FOSS community. So that would be helpful over time just to fill in OpenStreetMap. And then we have the infrastructure, which is it's pretty poor. There, there's a lot of gaps. A lot of the time you're sharing the roadway with cars, and, and so I'd love to see improvements there over time. This leaves the question of why isn't there more pedestrian data? So I was thinking about this. Why is pedestrian infrastructure and indeed the mapping of pedestrian infrastructure generally seen as a lesser priority? And this is just my own theorizing, but I think a lot of it comes down to historically what the commercial incentives were. If you think about, if you think about mapping, if you think about just what drives getting from A to B, uh, no pun intended, commercial incentives um, were really around petroleum and, and automotive companies. And so a lot of the mapping companies geared around that and technology followed like Google Maps when, when they moved into the, the digital mapping space. So just wanted to point, point out that history. I, I find it very interesting. Michelin, the Michelin Guide is another fascinating one. You look at Michelin, uh, the company that produces the, the they're well known for the, the Michelin stars that they give out. That was a tire company. And so we see these weird incentives that, that come to play. It's, there's also inertia here, right? If you've been mapping the cars for a long time, a lot of your technology is geared around that. And I think a lot of that flowed into the digital age, which means that we don't have as much focus on pedestrian infrastructure. And then the last thing is the, that it's harder to scale pedestrian infrastructure, collecting data on foot or on sidewalks. It's just more difficult. They're harder to see. They're, they're more narrow on satellite imagery. So that's where you guys can come in helping us to collect uh, data for pedestrian infrastructure. So as I run out of time, I just want to quickly show a few ways you can do this. This is a particular part of Puerto Vallarta in Mexico, pedestrian infrastructure, stairs that are probably hard to see on satellite imagery. You can map them with street level imagery like MapWay, which is, is uh, a tool that we have at Facebook for street level imagery, connects with OpenStreetMap. There's a tool that my colleague Chris is gonna talk about on Friday. Uh, make sure to check out his talk at 10.30 a.m. He's gonna be talking about using AI to extract pedestrian data from that street level imagery and then creating a line string that you can then review and add to OpenStreetMap using a tool that we have known as Rapid. So these are basically suggestions, AI suggestions of where to place foot, um, foot parts. Street Complete uh, here is another tool. Um, so I'm going to share that up with you and you can check out the slides. GoMap is one of my favorites on, on iOS to add pedestrian infrastructure. You've got Vespucci, another one on Android. Make sure to check that out. And here are some existing organizations doing some great work, Open Sidewalks, Wheelmap.org, and Link Up Here to Now. So I'd love to get to the Q&A now. What's the state of pedestrian infrastructure like in your area? What are you mapping? Where are you mapping? And why are you mapping? What interests you? So hopefully we can jump to questions, but if we don't have time for anything today, you can also connect with us here. We have our Twitter handle, um, my Twitter handle there, and then our support email, which is a great place to contact us. Awesome. Thanks for the talk, Eduardo. I think we have time for at least a question. So, We'll start with this one. The, hi, Eduardo. What's your take on the debate scheme duality of sidewalks as tax versus sidewalks as separate ways? Pros and cons? It's definitely a source of some tension and discomfort in the always SM community in my city. Yeah, I'd love to know which city that is. Um, I've heard similar things in various parts of Australia. I think from what I hear, there's just a lot of benefits of ways. They can be messier on the map because it's obviously in some narrow areas. I can see, I can see, and maybe some older European cities. If you have sidewalks right next to the ways, it could get really complicated on the narrow street. But I'm thinking about a lot of the cities that I visited where I am now. Having a separate way is so useful for routing because you can 
give much more specific directions to the start of the building entrance. Um, sometimes the actual roadway is not, in a lot of cities, it's not what a pedestrian should be walking on, particularly in places like Qatar, uh, for example, where walking as a pedestrian is, is a nightmare. You'd actually want to know where the individual ways are. You'd want to know where the crosswalks are that connect them, maybe even some underground connections between places. So I would see more pros for ways mapped individually than cons, but I understand that this is not a one size fits all, that some cities, it might just be too messy to map out the ways individually. So I'd love to know which city you're in and um, whether what considerations are in discussion for your community. Okay, thank you very much. I think that we don't have time for any more questions, I'm sorry. But anyway, they can contact you in your social media, for sure, right? Yeah, make sure to discuss on Twitter. I'd love to follow up on the conversation. And we have a, an email address as well that I'll, I think I, I have shared. But um, I'll tweet that out with the Phosphor G hashtag and I'd love to continue the discussion. All right. So thank you very much, Eduardo, for your talk. It was amazing. And see you around in Phosphor G. Thanks. See you around, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.